In a knowledge base system, a system that has a knowledge base and will work logically through its knowledge base to infer whether an event will happen or whether something is true or not, okay, I'm going to cover three algorithms to help us do this. If you don't know what the knowledge base looks like, please refer to the previous videos. Um, now, the knowledge base is just a set of propositional logic statements. Now, the first method I'm going to talk about is resolution. Then I'll talk about forward chaining, and then I'll talk about backwards chaining. Okay? So let's start with resolution. The idea here in resolution is that we're going to try to prove the query. We're going to try to prove whether the query is true or false, based on the knowledge base, by contradiction. So in order to show that my knowledge base entails my query, basically that my query is true, what I will try to show is that my no if I have a knowledge base and I add the negation of the query, then this is not satisfiable. Basically, this, this ends up in a contradiction of some sort and cannot be satisfied. So <clears throat> this is called a proof by contradiction. Again, so for example, if I want, if I have a knowledge base, and I want to know um, whether or not, uh, if I want to know, uh, sense like, should I move the queen, okay? Or if I have a knowledge base system, and my knowledge base system is asking, is it safe to land here, okay? Well, I will start by assuming that it's not safe to land there. If I end up in a contradiction then I assume it is safe to land there. If my contradiction holds, then I will assume that it's not safe to land there. Right? That's the proof by contradiction. I will start by negating what I want, and if I find out that negating what I want results in something illogical, then what I want is actually true. If I find that negating what I want, everything holds logically, then you know what I want is probably not true. All right. So we're going to apply resolution to this sentence. My knowledge base, whatever that was, all the ands of rules, the conjunction of rules, and the negation of the query in conjunctive normal form. And we will resolve the pairs of complementary literals, meaning those that have the positive and the negative version of them. Okay, And we'll solve them like this. We, we saw this in a previous video. If you have a lot of literals from 1 to k joined by an OR, and that's what the comma indicates here, and you have a bunch of other literals here from 1 to n joined by an OR, okay? If you have an L, Li here, Li, okay, if you have an Li and an Mj, MJ, such that LI and MJ are opposites, right? Are complementary. So LI could be uh, not P, and MJ could be P. These two are complementary. So if you have a set of clauses here from 1 to K and 1 to N, where the ith clause here is complementary to the jth clause here, you can just remove those and the resulting statement will be an OR of these two things with all the elements from L1 to I minus 1, because we took I out, and then Li plus 1 to Lk, right? This is all of these except for Li, or all of these except for Mj. So basically, if you have a set of ORs with some literal, and then another set of words with with the opposite of that literal, with a complementary clause, you take those and or all of the terms. This is this is a resolution rule, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to uh, look at pairs in the knowledge base. We're going to look at pairs of clauses with complementary literals, resolve them, and add the new clauses that result from this resolution add them to the knowledge base until there are no clauses to be added or and until two clauses resolve to the empty class, which means that the knowledge base entails alpha, which means that knowledge base and not alpha is not satisfiable. 
So the algorithm might look like this. You, you are welcome to take a look here. For each pair of clauses CI and CJ in the set of clauses in my knowledge base, I will resolve them. This PL resolve propositional logic resolve will uh, eliminate the one contradictory item, one contradictory literal from these two expressions and make it an OR. If the resolvents contain the empty clause, this is different than saying there the resolvent is the empty set. I mean, there's there's no complementary clauses. It's different. Okay. So if the resolvents contain the contain the empty clause, meaning when you resolve them, you end up with nothing. Okay. Then uh, you return true. Otherwise, you keep you keep doing this. Also, if the resolvents um, if whatever you end up resolving is a subset of what you had before, meaning you're going in circles, you, you're not doing anything useful anymore, then you return false, meaning there's a contradiction, the rule didn't hold. All right. So let's do it in, in this, this form. Say the agent uh, in my Wumpus world, say the agent is in cell 1, 1. There's no breeze, so no pits can be in there. Remember the Wumpus rules. You are in a grid and you, you um, feel a breeze if, if a pit is in one of the adjacent squares to you. Uh, <clears throat> so say the agent or the player is in 1-1, one, one, there's no breeze and no pits can be in there. My query is, my, my alpha is, there are no pits in 1-2, right? That's what I want to prove. I want to prove that there are no pits in 1-2. So what I'm going to do is, <clears throat> You can see, say, my, my knowledge base is comprised of two rules, rule two and rule four. You can see uh, previous videos to see what they are, but here I'm just going to lay them to you. Rule two is this one, and rule four is this. So basically, if there's a breeze in 1-1, one, one, that it happens if and only if there's a pit around it in 1-2 in one, or in 2-1. And rule four says that there's no breeze in 1-1 one, one, because that's where I start, right? So the agent's in 1-1, one, one, there's no breeze, okay? So no pits are in 1-1. One, one. But the question is, is there a pit in 1-2, right? So what I will do is using, uh, using the biconditional elimination and then the conditional elimination and then converting this to conjunctive normal form, which I did in the previous video, you end up with the knowledge base is this, Okay, the knowledge base ends up being this. It's all in conjunctive normal form. And the negation of alpha is this. So the knowledge base and not alpha becomes this whole expression. Now, we write each, one, each expression in parentheses as one of these squares. And we're going to start resolving pairs. So for example, let's take this one with this one. Okay. Here I have a uh, not p21 and I have a p21 here. I have complementary literals right here. So if I resolve these two with this complementary literal, I end up with b11, p12, and not b11. b11, p12, or not b11. That is what I end up with. So I resolve it. Now there's still more resolution to do, right? Because there's also here a B11 and a not B11. If I resolve it that way, I end up with not P21, P12, and P21. This is what this square has. P12, P21, and not P12. Okay? Uh, yeah. So, um, you see that P12, P21, yes, there you go. So what happens is that I will be doing this for every pair of clauses, okay? I will, I will look at all possible uh, opposite literals to take them out of here. Um, so I do that for all of them, I am, and I end up with these clauses. You will see. This one, I have... Uh, P12, for example, here. Let me backtrack. Now, if I am doing this one with this one, I have P12 and not P21. 
one, two here. So if I resolve, I resolve in not B11, which is there, P21, which is here. I can also resolve it with this opposite literal, right? These are two opposite literals. So another resolution for this would be P12, which is there, P21, which is there, and not P21, which is there, right? So I do, for each pair that I can resolve, I resolve, okay? So for example, in the case of, um, of these two, right? So B11 and P12, I, there's nothing to be resolved. There's no opposite, there's no complementary literal, so I don't resolve those. Only pairs that have complementary literals. So I resolve these. I add these clauses to my knowledge base, and I do this again. And we will notice that at some point I'm going to do this one, P12 and P1, not P12 and P12. They're opposite literals. But if I resolve them, I end up with nothing, right? I end up with nothing. So basically, this is a contradiction. And a contradiction will say that it is impossible to have a knowledge base with my query negated. Therefore, my query is true because it cannot be negated. It should be true. Okay? So the, the false, the negation of my query, if I independent contradiction, the negation of my query is not possible. Therefore, just the positive of my query is possible, which means uh, my query, the answer to my query is true. Remember these are yes or no question, or true or false questions, these queries. So now the answer to this is yes or true. And this is the resolution algorithm.